Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome to another episode of Phone. This episode is all about the Game Face Prime that I have right here. Yes, guys, I'm a proud owner of a red Game Face Prime. And I would like to give Jet Blasters a huge shout out because if not for Jet Blasters, I wouldn't have this on hand to share and talk about to you guys. Let's address something really interesting first as we start the video, and that is why would Jet be sending me one of these to talk about even though they don't stand to gain anything? Yeah guys, they don't stand to gain anything. A while ago, I think about maybe two months before recording this video, Tungsten got its hands on one of the Game Face Primes as well and his was in blue and when I saw it, I was like, dude, how did you get it in? And he said that, well, Jet sponsored that to him. So I was like, dude, I really wanted to get one and well, what do you know? brother hooked me up so yeah thank you so much tungsten for actually handshaking me with jet once again because you know you guys I, I actually met jet before but without him i think that this wouldn't have happened so by extension thank you tungsten shout outs to you and of course a huge huge thank you once again to jet for sending this to me now let's just clear the air the game face prime was designed by jet but they designed it specifically for Crossman, who is the parent company of Game Face. And so this Prime was actually designed for them, meaning to say Jet does not own it anymore. Jet doesn't have anything else to do with it. Crossman, as the parent company, are doing the manufacturing as well as the fulfillment for these blasters. That is why they only listed it on their own website. And well, there was a period of time when these were actually available in limited quantities on Amazon and Amazon Prime by extension. I mean, I don't know how Amazon and Amazon Prime works. Sorry guys, I'm quite a boomer that way. But yes, it was available on Amazon for a little while, albeit a little bit more expensive. Now these are actually going for about 89 US dollars. And well, let's just say I will keep my opinion towards the end of the video about the price point and all that. So keep in mind this information guys, Jet doesn't stand to gain anything by giving me one of this. But I do believe that since this is so much like the Cedar S, Anything that I say about this, whether it's positive or negative feedback, it will be also indirectly related to feedback for the Cedar S. Right, you guys know I actually own a Cedar in the past. I've sold it and then I actually handle a Cedar S thanks to Tim. Now, that's one thing I want to clarify. At Tim's place, when I first held the Cedar S, I was like, wow, this is amazing plastic. And then I found out later that it's actually the same plastic that was used for the Cedar and the Cedar S. It's just the finishing is different. To me, I was like, wait, wait, that's really mind blowing how just the finish on plastic could change the entire, I wanted to say perception, but it's not like, it really felt a lot more sturdy. It really felt like a higher quality plastic just because of the finish. Now that said, with regards to the Game Face Prime, this is also made of the same plastic that the Cedar S is made of, it's just that it's in a different color. So yeah guys, that was really mind-blowing to me and I wanted to clarify that because I got people from Jet actually giving me that information directly. So I wanted you guys to know that that is accurate and what I said initially about them having different plastics, that's wrong. So yes, that out of the way, I believe you guys have actually seen quite a few videos covering the Game Face Prime already. So I will say that here are some of the things that I really like about it. First of all, I love the plastic that is used on this. It definitely definitely helps to have this particular cedar s finish on it that kind of like matte finish or some kind of a slight textured finish the next thing is that this area initially when i looked at pictures i thought the body or the main chassis area was going to be in white but this is actually in a very light gray and i think that actually looks quite nice versus white because my initial concern was that white would yellow out really quickly but I don't think the same would happen for grey and this light grey is really cool. I've never seen any other blaster using this particular shade of grey and it really sets itself apart. So it's red and light grey. I like it a lot. I like the fact that this now actually has an angled front grip unlike the Cedar where it was a shotgun pump. So this angled front grip is slightly angled, not as angled as the Dart Zone Pro mark 1.1 or maybe even the adventure force nexus pro now i don't own a nexus pro so i can't really say but you know because the nexus pro is actually designed by dart zone pro and just rebranded as adventure force i think they are the same angle for the front grip but this is actually quite comfortable and next of course is the big feature of these quick takedown pins that was started in the first iteration at least was the cedar and then now it's also being used in blasters like the dart zone pro mark 1 and mark 1.1 and possibly also the takedown caliburn as well as the upcoming project aurora they all use these takedown pins but that also is one of the big negative points because 
of that red thing sound that they create. But I'll talk about that later. I'm talking about the features right now. So let me just not get too far ahead of myself. Sorry, guys. It's got Picatinny rails up top, which is why I've put on these Magpul or kind of like knockoff Magpul flip up sights. I just put them here so I can show you guys that, yeah, these are proper Picatinny. And the front grip here is removable as well. You could change it for any other front grip you like via the Picatinny system below. And then for the back here, this stock is also compatible with almost any other stock in the market. No spec, commercial spec, what have you not like Magpul spec? I don't even know if Magpul is a spec. But the one thing I realized that it's not compatible with is the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1 stock. That just doesn't work. Let me just quickly show you guys, okay? So it is an extendable or collapsible stock and it's quite sturdy. It is rather sturdy so you know that it won't collapse on you and it's quite simple to take out as well just push this down a little bit further and take it out and i have here a mill spec butt stock so yeah it's a quite a common butt stock design got shoulder stock i should say and then it goes on there comfortably very easily but i'm going to show you guys the compatibility with the dart zone pro mark 1.1 shoulder stock and this is just too too tight like look guys it's just friction so yeah, I could probably get it about this far and then it'll just get stuck completely. So now that's making me think like what exactly is the compatibility of the Dart Zone Pro Buffer 2. But that's something that we can discuss outside of this video. Let me just put this stock back on. It's that simple guys. Just collapse it all the way. Now let's talk about mag compatibility in the mag well. Of course, this comes with a Katana mag as well as the Katana adapter. And it is essentially compatible with any other Katana mags. It is also compatible with any Hasbro branded mag. But the system in here, the internals in here, takes only half length darts because internally this system is basically an Alpha RT, a Jet Blaster Alpha RT kit, including that 10 kilogram spring. Going back to the mag well, this is compatible with the Worker Talon mag as long as you have the Talon mag adapter, but it does not work with the Dart Zone Pro mags, meaning to say that it doesn't work with the full sized Dart Zone Pro mag. And that also means that it would not work with the Dart Zone Pro half length mag, even if you use that adapter, it just doesn't fit in there. And of course, needless to say, Dart compatibility is not bad as well. Let me just show you guys by way of a firing demonstration. First, let's use the Katana mag that came with this. Goes in there like that. And we are going to fire off. Wait, I didn't even tell you guys what darts are in here. Hold on. So in here is a silicone tip dart, followed by a boomer dart, followed by a single bamboo dart from the Dart Zone Pro. And then I've got four of these jet blaster or these, uh, but basically the darts that came with this blaster. So I, I don't know what darts these are called. Um, jet blaster darts, um, game face prime darts. I, I don't know, but it's just the darts that came with this blaster. So I'm going to call them the game face prime darts. That, that should be fair, right? That should be fair. So once again, a silicon tip dart, a boomer dart, a bamboo dart, and four game face prime darts. So here we go. Just a quick firing demonstration using this stock katana mag. Gonna fire all seven off and making sure that I don't hit myself in the throat again. Oh, I hit the mic. Well, that looks to be fine because all seven darts came out with absolutely no problem, as you guys could tell. Now, I'm going to show you guys the compatibility with the Talon Mag. So here's my Talon Mag and the adapter. And just like in the other mag, I've got the same seven darts in the same exact order. Well, it's not the same seven darts, the same seven dart types because the other darts are all over the floor right now. So it's a silicon tip dart, then a boomer dart, a bamboo dart, and four of the game face prime darts. So first, uh, let's just get this adapter in here. So the worker talent adapter is sitting right there. And then we're going to put the worker talent mag in. And let's fire off all seven darts. Here we go. Okay, there was one misfire, so that's my bad because I didn't prime it all the way. That was my fault. Or rather, I didn't push it close all the way. But it looks like all seven came out anyway. Just making sure that there's no dart stuck in there. Looks to be good. Firing demonstration, A-OK. -okay. Now, following up with the firing demonstration, I bet you guys are going to ask, what is the FPS? Now, like I said, I don't have a crony, but I did order one, so it's on the way. Hopefully, I'll get it soon, guys. Just, just, just relax, okay? Just relax. Now, 
I've always said FPS isn't everything to me. So it's something that I really do not care much about, but I know that a lot of people ask about it anyway. And people like to compare and see what the internals are, what kind of a setup that you have, what kind of darts you're using, what kind of mag you're using, and what are the FPS readings you're getting out of that. I will say that on the box, this is advertised to be firing at about 130 FPS. In fact, they say up to 130 FPS. But if you've watched any other video talking about the Game Face Prime, you know that this is consistently hitting at about 150 FPS. That's really awesome. Knowing that you could buy this product and it's gonna get you about 150 FPS. They don't lie about the readings that they're getting. So I, I really like that about this particular blaster. In, in fact, it's getting even better results than what is advertised. So I like that a lot. Now, of course, like I said, the internals here is basically a Jet Blasters Alpha RT kit, including the Zero Barrel. And the Zero Barrel still has the same Zero branding here as well. So it's something that you cannot get away from and you know for sure this is it. So those of you who have access to upgrade kits for, say for example, a Cedar Blaster, it is going to work in the Game Face Prime as well. Now, I don't think that I have to say this, but just for transparency, you guys, any opinion that I share about this blaster is completely unbiased and it's just really my honest opinion. Most importantly, Jet knows about this. Jet knows that I'm not going to sugarcoat my words. So I really appreciate them for allowing me to be honest with everyone and just really just sharing my opinion with you guys. I don't know why I felt that I had to say that, but I think that it'd be good for transparency. So yeah, now let's talk about some of the cons that I find about this blaster. And the first con is the same con that's being shared across anyone who has ever used a Cedar, a Cedar S, Dart Zone Pro Mark 1, Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1, the Game Face Prime, and that is, I said it earlier in the video, the rattling quick release pins. These rings here, while they are meant to be convenient, these are just, the noise it makes is obnoxious. But it's, I guess it's something that you have to find your own workaround for, right? For example, for me in my Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1, I tied a paracord weave to hold the two together. So for this, I might consider just removing these completely, just removing these rings and then just replacing it with like a paracord weave or like a zipper pull of sorts, you know? And that would basically mitigate the sound. So you have to find your way around it, just find the best solution for yourself. This is there for that convenience reason, but yeah, you know, it, it comes with the downside as well. The next con is a sentiment that is shared among every other YouTube review video that I've seen about this particular blaster and that is the fact that the plastic is kind of warpy. Well, that's not the right word. I would rephrase that and say that the tolerances on this is not the best. Like, you can hear the plastic creaking very easily and it, it does rotate a little bit here and there. It does walk from side to side at certain points. And this grip here, it is rather obnoxious. You could hear the plastic creaking and cracking when you talk it, but that is also partly the reason why I put this Glock silicone sleeve here because it adds comfort plus it makes it feel a little bit more sturdy. I'm not saying that it didn't feel sturdy in the first place, but just making it feel a lot more comfortable for myself because yeah, and of course it looks cooler, right? In my opinion, it looks cooler. Yeah, just put it there. Next is something that I don't think a lot of people pointed out. I think in fact, maybe no one else pointed out. Now the Game Face branding and the Prime branding or these two logos are kind of like painted on. I would say that they're kind of printed on. And when you glance at it like that, or if you see it on camera this way, it looks completely fine, right? And from a distance, it looks really, really good. But when you look at it up close, and you really stare at the plastic, you could see that there are some imperfections in the plastic, which tells me that, yeah, this thing was remolded because, you know, the Cedar name or the branding and the Jet Blaster branding was kind of like, I think it was like embossed onto the blaster shell, right? But this one is completely flat here. This is not embossed. So I think that they kind of removed that from the mold, but the removal process wasn't very well done. Like I wanted to say the word clean because this doesn't look very clean. You could actually see some imperfections in these two particular areas and I'm going to have to give you guys a close up in order to kind of explain that to you guys. But it's apparent on both sides and it is especially obvious at this area with the warning labels. This part has the most imperfections. And so with that said, I will say that Crossman needs to up the game in terms of that manufacturing process for this. Just make it a little bit cleaner because it is kind of obvious. Now that we're done talking about the molding, I want to talk about the warping here on the rifle sling attachment point. There is a slight warp here. And initially I thought, well, this could be just my piece. But when I look closely at Tungsten's video, because I was scrutinizing it quite a bit, I realized that his also has like a wider gap here. So this could be like either a manufacturing issue or some tolerance issue, I don't know, but there is 
this this butterflying here and uh, yeah I, I i don't think it looks very good but that's just my opinion you know I, I mean i could tape it down but what's the point right it's just warping here and the next con that i find with the blaster is pertaining to the safety switch those of you eagle-eyed viewers who would have noticed that i don't have a safety switch here that's because i am left-handed the safety switch is geared towards right-handed usage and so you know i thought i could just simply swap it around if i open it up and i realized that it wasn't that simple because it tapers in a particular direction now i have to say that i've done this exact mod on the cedar back then where i wanted it to be i guess friendlier for left-handed usage but i had to kind of file that safety piece down i'm gonna have to do the exact same thing but i have to say that doing that mod is a lot easier and more straightforward than trying to do the same mod for the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1 because that was specifically made with tabs and nubs sticking out and we are talking about this exact piece here and it looks like it's identical on both sides but it is actually tapered on one side so you're gonna have to kind of sand it down just make it a little bit more narrow and then it'll work however with that said I've been using this blaster just fine without the safety switch so what the heck it's, yeah it's just another con at least I wanted to point out to you guys right next let's move on to the pros of this blaster and some additional features that I want to share as well now first of all is the ability to quickly disassemble this blaster well kind of disassemble it well just take it apart for field maintenance you just have to remove these two pins i won't be doing that you guys have seen this done a thousand times before but what i do want to share is this so first of all you just remove these two thumb screws here that connect the arms to the bolt sled and that's done just simply by unscrewing these screws here i don't know why i can't just perform this simple action and speak at the same time think i'm getting old but what the heck now there is a slot at the base of the shoulder stock and this allows you to screw in these two thumb screws it fits perfectly and it's not going to go anywhere this is super secure so you know you won't be losing these two for sure now i don't know if you guys are kind of getting where i'm going with this but if you look on the back of the box you'll notice that they have a graphic of this in its exploded form and then i realized that yeah you could actually remove or basically take out this front half this barrel piece here so the next step then is to remove the zero barrel which is really simple you just got to unscrew it and then remove it by pulling it out and yes guys i changed the sleeve of the barrel here this is now a worker orange barrel sleeve and the reason why i did that is because yeah i forgot to mention this in the cons but the original sleeve is in white as well as the pump connector it's in white so i just thought like why are these white and this part is grey, why couldn't they make everything grey instead of white? You know, like it's just, yeah, yeah, just something that was rather interesting. Of course, you don't actually see these parts very clearly most of the time. But yeah, you know, I don't like white as much as grey. And so I chose orange instead because just because I know it could fit. Okay, now that the zero barrel has been removed, basically over here, there is a small nub that you can push in and it allows you to remove this front piece here completely so you have access to this right now it's a complete open slot now and what that allows you to do is to completely remove the pump see whole thing and now you can just simply twist and remove the front barrel so that means that you could remove this and then you could remove the takedown pins and split this into half and that results in three small compact parts of a single blaster and that would be so convenient for transporting this around this is this is really awesome but this is also the reason why the blaster feels kind of wobbly kind of flimsy at certain points and that's because the cedar and the cedar s had a solid piece for the entire front half and it is of course the same thing for the dart zone pro mark 1 and 1.1 you notice here there is a small little nub that means that you could also now in the future attach other attachments here that could fit on this so i tried and they do fit but you're going to have to cut down the inner barrel of any front barrel attachment that you're going to put on because the zero kit actually has this black piece sticking out like that so it's not flush so that would get in the way however i'm not yet able to find any pump grip that would be compatible with the game face prime because there are dedicated slots here for the pump grip arms to go into and this is basically wider than a standard retaliator so all other retaliator pump grips don't work as well even if you could attach it to the front of a retaliator barrel but this is cool anyway and it definitely opens up a lot of possibilities in terms of like designers out there anyone who's interested in designing something that could replace this front that would fit the pump grip as well so yeah just you know just wanted to share that because this i think is a really awesome feature that was not really spoken about much 
the only other person that I saw talking about this particular feature is Tungsten. So yeah, shout out to you once again, bro. And let me just put everything back in place. Oh, by the way, uh, you don't actually have to remove the zero barrel if you want to remove this front piece because it's compatible that way. But it's just that I chose to do that because I was going to remove it completely and I wanted to show that to you guys. And we are done and back in action. The next pro is the fact that the front grip uses two Phillips head screws. That to me is super convenient because, you know, so many times when you get different front grip attachments, especially if it's those being used for airsoft guns or real steel firearms, those require you to have a specific hex key or allen key in order to remove the screws or undo your screws. And different, I guess different manufacturers, different makers use different size ones, which can be really confusing and frustrating at times if you don't have the right size on hand to remove your grip. But this right here are a pair of Phillips head screws. And that's just so convenient because if you ever want to open up the blaster, you're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver anyway, and you can use the same exact tool to remove this front pump grip. That is super, super awesome. Another feature I like is the fact that this mag release lever is ambidextrous, so you could have it on either side. I like that a lot. And overall, I'm really, really drawn to this design aesthetic. It looks a little bit like the honey badger kind of thing. So yeah, uh, I, I really, I really dig this design. Honestly speaking, I know that there are people who like the cedar over this, but I'm a fan of this over the cedar. I also prefer this design over the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1. I kid you not. I really think this looks super cool. Of course, you guys could say, hey guys, what about the worker prophecy with the honey badger kit? Well, that looks cool, but the arms are sticking out on the outside. These feature pump grip arms that are concealed inside. Like, so yeah, I mean, guys, this looks really, really good to me. It's a design thing and it's really personal taste, but you know, I have my taste and you have yours. I like this design a lot. Now the shoulder stock design is not the best looking one I've seen so far, but I must say that it looks quite cool. I like this kind of skeletonized look, not too much here as well. Of course that angle does look nice, but it does give you a very minimalistic look overall. So yeah, design aesthetic wise, this is pretty good. I, I like it. I honestly, honestly like it. Another huge pro in my opinion is the fact that you could deprime the blaster. Unlike its direct competitors, you are not able to deprime those blasters. However, those blasters do have a slight advantage over the Cedar and the Game Face Prime, and that is that they offer slam fire, and this does not. But you know, it's just really which side of the fence you're on. And for me, I prefer the ability to deprime your blaster, especially if I'm going to upgrade the internals to a higher spring load. I want to make sure that I can do that because I don't want to risk damaging anything for no reason by dry firing thing. But the biggest pro about this blaster above, say for example, the Dart Zone Pro or even the Adventure Force Nexus Pro is the fact that you could easily upgrade the internals. And I'm actually honestly focusing on just really the bolt sled because I think that the bolt sled is the greatest failure point when you're talking about upgrading your blasters. When you want to go for a higher spring load and you want to change out your plunger tube and all that kind of stuff, the thing that really is the make or break part really is the bolt sled. This works with any retaliator bolt sled. Even the Worker Prophecy Metal Bolt Sled works on this as well. Of course, you could get an upgrade kit. There are upgrade internal kits, like for example, AK Mods has some upgrade internal kits. So that's a really, really cool thing because you have kits that are really available to push the limits of this blaster. But when we talk about, say for example, the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1, I, Mark 1.1, I, and we talk about the Nexus Pro, the thumb screws actually screw into the bolt sled there are threads on the bolt sled slot. And if you want to upgrade your bolt sled and you want to have, say for example, a metal bolt sled, it means that you will have to perform some mods on that bolt sled. You're going to have to bore out the slots a little bit wider. You're going to have to source out some adapter screw thread, some kind of a conversion thread adapter thingy. And then you're going to have to epoxy that into the slot. Then you're going to have to sand it flush. And you're going to have to do all of that if you want to upgrade just the bolt sled for the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1, I, Mark 1.1, and the Nexus Pro as well. So this is just an instant swap. I can't say instant, it's a very simple swap. So yeah, this is the biggest pro in terms of being able to push the performance of your blaster. The Game Face Prime and by extension, the Cedar and Cedar S win over its direct competitors in that realm. And that is the end of the pros that I want to share with you guys. So now that we've gone through the pros and cons of this, let's talk about price point. This is going for 89 US dollars. Now, if you compare this 
to the Cita S. The Cita S was going for 85 US dollars. And the first version of the Cita that I bought in the past was about 65 US dollars. Now comparing that to say, for example, the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1, that is about 150 US dollars. They're about just slightly under $150. And then of course we have the Nexus Pro, I don't own one of that, but that is coming in under the 50 US dollar mark. Now, if I throw in another blaster in that kind of same realm into the mix, that would be the worker prophecy. And that could range anything from like $150 up to about, what, $200, depending on what are the different parts or internals that you want to add into that particular blaster. Cause that's kind of more like a build your own blaster kind of thing. So yeah, for 89 US dollars, the pros and cons, you decide. In my opinion, I think that this is actually more worth than my Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1. Plus the fact that I went through so much trouble just to get it into my hands. Yes, that allows you to fire off both full length and half length darts. This only fires half length darts, but the ability to upgrade the internals, to upgrade the spring, upgrade the bolt set and things like that, those are things that I cannot deny as well. So in my opinion, I think that this was actually a lot more worth the money. <laughs> and I got to share with you guys, I remember when I first bought the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1, Tim actually asked me like, bro, why didn't you just get a Cedar S? And I was like, yeah, why did I not? I'm quite happy with this and I really have to thank Jet Blaster again for putting this in my hands. I really appreciate it guys, I really appreciate the gesture and yeah, those are my my thoughts, my opinions and what I think about this blaster overall. I hope that Crossman is watching, you know, I think that there are a couple of points that they could take out of this video and make a slight improvement to this. If I could suggest anything to Crossman to make this a little bit better or improve this overall, I think one would be to insert some kind of a silicone ring in between this area here where the barrel attaches to the main body just so that you could still allow for this capability to remove this part but that silicone ring would add a bit of buffer here and dampen the overall creakiness of the blaster because i understand the cost implication if they had to retool or basically create a new mold for this so just adding that extra small thin silicone ring i remember men gun used to provide that whenever you bought one of their front barrel attachments so i think that would be a good option the next option would be to source out small little sized o-rings to put into the thumb screws because the thumb screws do come loose every once in a while and that would add a little bit more security for the thumb screws here and that's just my opinion and i got that idea from the dart zone pro mark 1.1 because they actually have some o-rings on the thumb screws and that that's a really nice touch now as i'm about to wrap up this video i do have some information that i want to share with you guys some things that i want to talk to you guys about and let you guys know because i spoke with jet quite a bit and I did ask some questions. There are some things that I am not able to talk about, unfortunately, but I do have information that I can share and I think that you guys will find this very interesting. Now, Jet's ethos, and when I say Jet, I really mean like the Cedar Blasters and of course the Game Face Prime. Now, the ethos is to build and customize your blaster and they want to provide a hobby-grade blaster. And they are continuously striving to be able to make things a lot easier for their customers. Now, with that said, right, this is something that I asked them about and that is the price point of their blasters. All of us have been talking about like, wow, this is the future of Nerf because now we have the Nexus Pro. We've got the Aeon Pro coming out. These Adventure Force blasters are so affordable. They are on shelves and everything. Jet is not a gigantic company. And uh, yeah, I'm not trying to defend them or anything. I just wanted to share this information with you guys. And the fact is that if they get these blasters manufactured, they're going to have to require at least a minimum quantity of 4,000. And that's not actually set by the manufacturing company. It is the shipping limitations because you're going to ship an entire cargo container and that would basically mean that you have to fill everything up in order for it to make the most monetary sense. If you're not going to use up the whole container, then there's no point. It's just wasted money and drive costs way higher. So think of it this way. It's more like a supply and demand kind of issue. Now, the next issue is that they are not able to fulfill shipment direct from China. They're going to have to get the whole container of cargo here into Singapore first before redistributing out to every other customer. And I know that out there, the general sentiment is that, you know, Jet is really slow in terms of delivering. Now, I don't have any information about that. I have no idea. So that is not in what I'm going to be talking about. What I do know is that it's because of this supply and demand issue that is the reason why we are not seeing the Cedar S as much as Jet would like us to see it. You know, if that makes sense to you guys, you know what I mean? Like they do want to put these products out for all of us, but it's just that, yeah, there isn't that demand, you know? Even for enthusiasts, like for example, say in Australia, like I mentioned, they're going to have to ship all of those in from China, here to Singapore before distributing it out 
to Australia. But uh, I don't really have a lot of information about this, but the team at Jet did say, stay tuned because it does seem like Australia is going to get a batch of Cedar S in the country. I don't know for sure. Don't take my word for it, but it was a hint dropped to me. So I'll just relay that information to you guys, yeah? So that was the information that I have on hand that I wanted to share with you guys. Hopefully you found that information interesting because I did. I found it interesting to get an extra insight about how things kind of work in the hobby grade Nerf Blasters world from the lens of Jet Blasters. And that was that was really interesting to me. And I, I, I really am quite thankful and honored that they were actually willing to share that information with me. And I even got permission to share that information back down to you guys. So yeah, um, kudos to Jet for that. And that is it for this video, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you liked it. I know that you guys have watched many other videos about the Game Face Prime, but I hope that I managed to provide something a little bit different. Maybe just even if it's just one additional piece of information that you guys did not know, I hope that I did that for you. So yeah, in a nutshell, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video because yeah, uh, I, I had fun making it. It's been a while since I really geeked out and talked about a blaster like that, right? Yeah, feels like good old times. <laughs> and once again, shout out to Tungsten and shout out to Jet Blaster for providing this blaster to me. This guys, once again, is the Game Face Prime. Kind of wish they stuck to the name Havoc though. But yeah, the Game Face Prime. And uh, yeah, I really like this. And I'm now a really proud owner of a red version of the Game Face Prime. Yeah. I'm done. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to say. Drills pay the bills. And teamwork makes the dream work. Peace.